Hi, I'm Amy Rodman. Welcome to Igniting Creativity. I am interviewing a fellow OutSchool teacher, but this teacher is incredibly impressive with how she has built her business and made it grow. So she's no longer a single teacher on the platform, but she runs an organization. She has an impressive eight teachers working for her, and she really dives deep into how she made this business a success with that gradual buildup, how she has funneled kids into her classes, how she communicates with parents, and how she has allowed others to take over aspects of her business that either she didn't have time for or somebody else could do better. And I think that's an incredible way to learn is seeing what other people have done. And when they share their knowledge, it's so very important. So. Welcome, Christine Dizon. So, hi, Christine. It's so nice to meet you. I'm so glad to have you as part of this podcast. This is Christine Dizon, and she is a music and language educator that works virtually. So, can you tell us a little bit about how you ended up making this part of your career? Well, first of all, Amy, thanks for having me uh, here with you. Uh, so, well, essentially, what happened was. I had been doing out school since uh, February 2016, I believe. Wow. Oh, wow. So really early. Yeah. It's, it's been a long time. Yeah. It, it actually started as a type of uh, side hustle. Um, I'm, a mu I'm a musician. And so I had used the money that I had earned from those lessons early on. I had maybe a handful of classes uh, back then. This, mm -hmm. was actually, this was actually during the time that Nick... Grandy interviewed me. Uh, for... Oh wow! Like you, you know Nick, the mysterious Nick that sends us all emails. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, he was he was really great. I mean, this is really when out school was starting, and it was it was so great to have that as a type of, I guess you could say side hustle, as people would call it, mm -hmm. uh, because it allowed me to purchase music. Um, uh, it helped me purchase materials that I needed. Um, for when I was doing my studies. I'm still uh, finishing my PhD uh, in at the Catholic University of Portugal in Lisbon. And so, um, you know, the money that I was earning from that was uh, allowing me to pursue, you know, the things that I want. I wanted in my um, pro professional career as a, as a musician also. Um, but then what happened was, uh, then I started getting a gradual following. Um, it wasn't, it was not instant. I would definitely tell you it's not instant. Uh, it takes several months to be able to build that. Right. And I think that too many people expect to just be like, okay, I don't know why my classes aren't feel, filling or I, you know, I, I'm giving up. It's like it, nothing has happened for a month, but really you do have to stick with it and let it be gradual and just very organic. Yes, for sure. And I was really, I was really surprised because I was, you know, I was, uh, I made a list of things that I was good at and things that I was not good at. So I focused <laughs> on the things that I was good at <laughs> right? To, to be able to, to make this happen. And so I said, okay, I know several languages. Um, I've studied several languages. I am fluent in several languages. Okay. Languages. Here we go. Right. And then I said, okay, I, you know, I went through all of this crazy training, you know, conservatory training, university training um, as a professional musician. Why not take the things that I've learned in those settings and adapt it in an online format? Um, mm -hmm. So then, so then uh, essentially what happened was during the pandemic, then there was this huge boom and my uh, personal email had gotten so congested like oddly and I was, I was just was like amazed I was like wow you know um and I, at that point I had been doing like pretty steady because I was also teaching um I was teaching in France also in was, person in in person yes. yeah um, and I was also uh at the time when the pandemic hit I was also finishing my prix de perfection at the conservatoire de Versailles um I had uh, been doing my conducting diploma from Ecole Normale de Musique de Paris. Um, oh, it sounds so official whenever <laughs> you say it. 
I, you know, no, I mean, but it was just, it was, you know, I was also, you know, I was also working, uh, you know, in schools, like music schools right. and in, in France. And it just, when that, when everything happened, I, then it was just, wow. I, you know, I never thought that all of these families would want to work with me all at once. But the thing is what happened was that it was like a gradual trust you build over time. And that's, if I were mm -hmm. to, if I were to give any advice to any of the new teachers who want to be successful on this port platform um, is being able to develop that trust. You know, teach that one learner. Uh, I, a lot of my early classes was, if I wanted to build a following for that class, I would teach that one learner, even though you might average like $8 or $9. <laughs> uh, I know. I agree with you though, because the, some of my most loyal learners are ones that started off in a very small class, you know, one or two, maybe three students. And you are able to build that relationship with them. You get to know them a little better. And if it's not set as a private lesson, you know, where you do charge more, of course, you're making sometimes less than $10 for that hour or whatever it is. But I don't look at it like, as, oh, I only made $8 for that hour. I look at it more as like the big picture. Do you do the same as where like I average it out? Okay, so I have a class with 10 students and I also only have a class with one student, but you know, overall it's still worth it. Oh, for sure. You know, the, you know, I, I sometimes see this and uh, you know, in different Facebook groups, like, oh, my life is so hard because I had one learner and it was, you know, and I said, it's not about that. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's one person's life that you could make a difference in, you know, in that mm -hmm. short moment. Um, it's also um, a matter of having, you know, that one student, you know, throughout a course, if you funnel, um, one, actually one of the people that I, I learned a lot from was teacher Jade. Uh, oh, I had my mentoring session with her. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, well, I mean, I, I haven't worked with her directly, but with the different tips that she's had online was mm -hmm. you know, when you, when you funnel students like that one person, even though it's just one person in that one class could, would, would probably take, if they liked it well enough, will take more classes as you keep going. And, right. and with that in mind, it's like, I mean, for now that I'm an organization, um, it's, you know, I, I, I can't ask my teachers, my say, hey, there's one kid, can you teach that person? You know, uh, just because I also want to be respectful of their time because they wouldn't be able to receive the same pay as mm -hmm. they would you know, teaching a group lesson. So when I'm able to do it within my schedule, um, and if it's a young class, and when I say young class, it's like if it's just created, then I, I myself would go in and teach it myself. And okay. So, yes. Yeah, so that you can establish that course. Establish it, create a base, create a following. I mean, uh, a lot of people say, oh, you know, I don't want to invest in my, you know, my uh, media and things like that. As a teacher, you know, especially when you, when you have, uh, you know, like a business or an organization, you, know, you there is like that level of like, if you want to be able to grow and, you know, then, you know, uh, create small campaigns. It doesn't have to be too crazy. Mm -hmm. I've been doing, I've been doing things on Pinterest, like kind of like one of those dollar a day, you know, campaigns. Um, okay. Things. Yeah. So explain maybe how you, I have a couple different questions, one about organizations and then you're going into Pinterest and like marketing too. So like when you say campaigns and marketing, that's a question I see come up a lot. So did you start by doing a lot of free pins and, you know, just like the organic traffic and then begin to pay for those ads and do you see results from the paid ads? Well, uh, it wasn't actually until recently that I started putting more, um, putting more weight into this, more attention to it. Um, mm -hmm. because I want to make sure that if I'm able to, uh, do uh, a little bit more marketing that, because, uh, prior to that, I, I, never really did that much. A lot of the traction that uh, I had gotten as a private teacher uh, and into the early parts of my organization had been through, throughout school. Like I had- Right, yeah, same. 
Mm -hmm. on on uh, campaigning, but because I want to make sure also that because I can't teach every class <laughs> that that the families are also able to establish a trust with the different teachers that I have. And, mm -hmm. you know, for example, using TikTok, also um, learning more about that medium, um, being able to use Instagram, Pinterest, as we talked about, uh, and things like that. So, so um, let's go back to the organization. So everybody understands what that is and how that works, because I am an individual teacher. I have not broken into the organization aspect of it, but I understand how it works and I know other teachers that do it. But how did you get to the point where you felt you needed to open an organization? What exactly is it and how did you find your teachers? Well, uh, yeah, it's crazy. I had... Whew. I, I had been teaching during uh, 2020. I had been teaching between 14, maybe 12 to 14 hour days. Oh was, my gosh. I, I don't, I don't know how you can sit in front of the screen for that long. Yeah, that's not healthy. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I mean, but it was really, I got to meet so many cool kids. I, and some kids just impressed the living daylights out of me. I said, wow you inspire me to be a better human. Like, no, really, like I, I'm, really, I'm not yeah. saying that. I, I got to meet so many kids and that was really cool. And then it got to the point where I said, okay, well, I, I can't, I, I got to the point where I couldn't fulfill a good lar large amount of requests because I had been so busy. Um, in addition to the group lessons, we, I also had private students through the platform and so, uh, it was just, it was a lot, you know, and mm -hmm. then I, I had to learn, uh, and I said to myself, okay, you know, I saw that things were lightning with the pandemic and I, you know, and I needed to finish my PhD and I said, okay, well, I need, I think I need to become an organization and need to take the leap of faith. I saw the pros and cons of it. Mm -hmm. And I've seen, you know, even some things in, you know, the different Facebook groups, I would never register my child for an org because of X, Y, Z. And, you know, I said, okay, well, the thing is like, I'm still making the curriculum that I had authored uh, available to, to students who want to learn uh, from right. that. Um, in regards to hiring teachers, I had made a small post in the one of the groups or organization groups, I think I found two yeah. teachers um, initially through there. And then eventually I had wanted to build uh, just because I wanted to be able to cover different time zones. So in October, um, in one of the Facebook groups that I'm in, one of one of the teachers had mentioned, you should use Indeed. You know, Indeed, I found so much great talent on Indeed. And I said, okay, well, mm -hmm. I'll, spend, I'll spend the $10 and see what happens. And then as a result, I found, uh, oh, wow, uh, a lot of talent um, on that, uh, you know, through through that website. That was really cool. So we're, we're up to, I believe, eight teachers now. Uh, wow. So, yeah. So you've really built it. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was insane. Um, and, and these are people who are also, you know, I was amazed. I was like, you know, when I first started my organization, I said, it, the outline said, okay, uh, you have to have a business license. You have to have a website. You have to have X, Y, Z. I said, yeah, okay. you have to be an official business. <laughs> I'm an LLC. And so I said, okay. So I applied for it through the state of Minnesota. I said, okay, all right. That was $150 online. Woohoo. I uh, outsourced for my website. So uh, my previous, my first assistant um, had hired uh, someone to, who was a website designer. And so he designed my website for a very good price. Mm -hmm. uh, I recommend outsourcing. There's, a, it's a really uh, great way of being able to um, get things um, at a, a very good price, you know, for, for quality. And he, he did a really great job. And when you say outsourcing, like where do you is that's not what the organization is called outsourcing right it's like oh. is where oh, no, do you no. go <laughs> like i've heard of fiverr and i've heard of um upwork and you know there's all kinds of teachers that are looking for extra work that is familiar with what we do that you know if you 
kind of ask in different groups, you can get recommendations, but where have you outsourced? Well, I started, uh, I started with Upwork. Uh, so that was like the, where I found my first assistant and essentially she, she had introduced me to the designer who had created our logo. Oh, right? awesome. <laughs> so, uh, she, uh, she was a call. She's actually a college student. Um, and I was really, I mean, it took, I, I think I probably made her work really hard for that one. Cause it was like, I think a hundred <laughs> versions of this <laughs> until you were so happy with it but look how great it looks yeah <laughs> you know if you're watching the youtube video obviously you can see that but if you are um hearing the podcast you'll have to see show notes to <laughs> to view the logo yeah and um it's uh so and i i said okay that's the logo we went through different colors of birds different colors of clouds <laughs> and it was it was it was that and um you know with my de website designer he he's also um he's also a student but he was he was so ta the work that he had done uh he was so talented that i actually had him um do things for my uh professional portfolio um as my musician side Mm -hmm. I always joke with I always joke with my my students. I said I moonlight as a clarinetist, you know, <laughs> instead of that being your main focus anymore, huh? No, I mean it is my main focus. Um, I mean I have different focuses, but I always joke with them, and they said, "Oh, uh, Miss Christina, YouTube, do you?" I said, "Oh, you did." <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, I digress. I'm sorry. I just, I'm. <laughs> no, but it's fun to know that the students care and like see you as a human, you know, because often this is an example where whenever I was student teaching so, so long ago, um, my cooperating teacher told me how, like, she showed me this one little boy who was in first grade, or maybe he was in second grade, I guess, by the time I saw him. And she said, see that little boy over there? He's the most adorable thing ever. He cried on the last day of school last year. And I said, why did he cry? And she said, because he was so afraid of me being lonely because he thought that I'd be so afraid to be there all by myself because he thought when he was in first grade and that was the first year she had him, he thought she lived in the storage room of the art room and didn't realize like she has a life and a family and goes home and, you know, like to them, like that that art room that they go to is the whole world for that teacher. <laughs> so isn't it interesting whenever students do see you as a real person too? Yeah, you know, no, and they're so supportive too, you know, and, and that's the thing, you know, it's amazing. People sometimes ask me, they say, how, how can you feel connected with someone that you've never been in the same room with? Oh, I've had the same conversation with other teachers too. And I've had to explain it to so many people outside of the virtual teaching world. Yes. And I say it's because, you know, if, if you're invested in, in them and they feel that you're invested in them, that's, that's also another thing of being able to build that type of loyalty, I think, and that mm -hmm. type of trust um, with with kids and you know the thing is like the students that do stay um for example we have the spanish for young learners series that we have it's um one of my favorite it's my baby it's actually the first <laughs> it was actually one of the first classes that i created on out school um that has since developed into like a multi-series multi you know we mm -hmm. have the introduction the intermediate and the advanced and i the students that have gone and stuck through it from the introduction to to the advanced courses um you know it's crazy have been you know a winning con contest in spanish you know being able to you know travel to different places and you know telling me oh i understood everything and i wow. noted that yeah. he would, he did not conjugate that verb correctly i said oh, oh. <laughs> I was like, I've, you know, like, you know, being, you know, and you no, know, cause they, they hear those things. Cause I, you know, and I, it's just, it's, it's really, it's, it's really great, you know, to, to see, to see that. It's, with it's a proud moment too, as a teacher getting to experience that with them in a way, like hearing about their accomplishments. I got an, a message recently from one of my parents that her daughter, who is rather quiet during class and doesn't even always want to show her artwork. You know, like she's very particular about what she's willing to hold up for everybody. And 
she um, won an award in her grade level and she, you know, she just moved to secondary school and her mom said, you know, that's such an accomplishment that she was receiving such high marks. One of her pieces was chosen for this really prestigious show, you know, and she said, I really appreciate the time you've worked with her, which she's been with me for 18 months or so. And, you know, seeing the progress and just being able to actually see and remember what it was like at the beginning to where she has come now, you know, it's, it's really something to be proud of for them. And, you know, you getting to hear about all these different experiences that they have as they've progressed. And when you say, you've mentioned like funding, funneling classes, you know, obviously having a beginner and intermediate and advanced, that's a funnel. So, so often I hear teachers that are newer not knowing what a funnel is. And it's just that you want to build up your class, your course catalog so that you're able to continually bring these students back and challenge them more and, you know, see them progress. Yeah, for sure. And I, I view it more so as a, as a type of journey, I think. Mm -hmm. And it took, a, you know, it took a lot of trial and error to see how things worked. And uh, it's one of those things that I feel, I feel that, you know, toward, toward, uh, towards the ends of the classes, I always do a reflection period with the kids. So we, you know, I usually spend about maybe the last um, like five or 10 minutes, depending on the number of kids in the class. Mm -hmm. We reflect on what we've learned. And I feel like that also part of, you know, that type of reflection to kind of like ask, ask them, well, how did you feel? Like, did you feel good about the work that you've done? Because sometimes the hard part with kids is that they always feel like they don't do enough. And, you know, or yeah. they're, they're just like, oh, I got that wrong, you know, type of thing. And I, and I always try to like, kind of re like recenter it back to, you know, what are the good things that you've done? You feel like you've done what could have been better for you. And I find, I found by shaping it, like as that type of question for, for kids, they're able to, you know, really think, oh, I could have, this could have been better, or I could have been better at this. You know, I love Kahoot. I want to see more Kahoot or I, and I, Kahoot is like insane. Like, you know, it's like, <laughs> I thought I, I thought it was like we're at a football game, you know, in some of the classes where I've used Kahoot. But but being able to kind of gauge that from kids, because the result of what I've done is a result of how they've, you know, what I hear from them. Right. Yeah. And getting that feedback is so important because that's also making you a better teacher and it's helping you develop your classes so that they're learning in the best ways. For sure. And, and being able to do uh, research and, you know, really analyzing data. And that's something that I, I've learned recently. And it's really valuable, you know, seeing, you know, seeing the trends, being able to understand the keywords. Um, you know, my I, I work quite a bit with my account manager. Uh, she's she's really nice and she's amazing. She travels all over the world mm -hmm. and, you know, she's very supportive of me. Um, you know, in regards to, you know, hey, I have a couple of flyers, would it be possible to have these like put up in like different grocery stores or, you know, um, not, I mean, we live in such a digital media age um, that people sometimes forget, oh, you know, because we do go to, we still go to places, right? Right. You know, going to community boards, making sure that the QR code is readable, um, being able to, you know, um, and I don't want to say old school because I don't I don't like to think of myself that old. <laughs> <laughs> but being able to also, you know, not completely abandon that part of, um, you know, of marketing and things like that. So. No, I agree. Like you mentioned TikTok and Pinterest and Instagram and all of that. And that is going to give you this broader reach outside of your own area. But there's nothing like word of mouth and, you know, that home town feel, because when you do something that somebody loves, they're going to tell a friend, they're going to see it somewhere else. You know, they're going to recognize your name whenever they see your flyer up there. And, you know, that's building trust too. That's, you know, them seeing what you're doing and what you're about. For sure. And I, and that's the thing. That's why I, you know, I want to encourage when I, if I were to encourage someone, I would probably say, if you, 
if you pay attention to your profile page, if you, you know, have a short video of you talking, showing that you're fun, that you're, you're interesting, that you have something to offer, that, you know, no matter, even if you have 20 or 30 years of experience, you know, like on this, on this type of platform, you want to be able to gauge that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some of my best teachers, um, you know, I've, for example, I've learned if I want to be able to develop a teacher, right, to, to be able to teach the same number at the, at the high quality, I'm not going to say the same high level as me, because I teach a different way. I'm a different person. Right. But, yeah. Everybody's going to have their own teaching style, but you have a standard that you've set for what you want your organization to be, right? Of course. And I, and they know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if they're listening to this. <laughs> um, so, uh, <laughs> no, but uh, they, and, and the thing is, you know, being able to, you know, uh, provide opportunities for development, um, provide opportunities for growth and to feel like, and that's the thing. It's not just with the students, but I also, as, as an organization, I have to be able to establish that trust with my teachers. So if something weird happens on the platform, like all of my classes disappeared and I don't know what happened. Oh no, has that actually happened? I, I think it happened to one fellow. We're still confirming. Uh, oh no. Submitted a ticket through support. Right. Uh, <laughs> no, but uh, okay, well, well, let's research what happened. I'm not gonna go, you know, full like, ah, you know, like this. I mean, I'm not that <laughs> anyway, but, uh, but to really make sure that before I make a decision, and this is something that I learned um, being an organization is that to make sure you know the facts, you know what happened, to not jump to, too much or too deep into something that you don't have all the information for. And I feel like in a sense that that was actually really a learning, a learning process for me that I think, you know, sometimes we forget, oh, it's about the student, the student, the student. But right. if, if, if we're getting, for example, if we get, um, if a parent has a complaint about, you know, one of my teachers, then I'm going to, you know, do the research that I need to, to make sure that I can support that teacher, but also be able to address the address the complaint, you know, type of thing. Mm -hmm. But we 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 don't have so many of those, um, you know. Happen. I found the parents on Outschool are so supportive. Like it's so rare that if they and when you say complaint, like I don't know what what your situation has been, but like maybe it's something that it's. For me, I would say rather than complaint, it's more just they have a concern about how how something is done. Like, you know, was the class taught to the class description? And, you know, they're not always like sitting right there with the student to see and they see the final result or whatever. And so, you know, just explaining this is what the class was like. Them knowing, too, they can always watch the recording. Like, I have absolutely nothing to hide, you know, that they can always record or, you know, review that or whatever. And so it's just been very helpful for them to, like, understand the process of where we started and where they ended sometimes because, every student is at a different level too. So I, I feel like that communication is a really strong part of building the relationship with the parents because one of the students that like after the first class, she felt that we took too much time to draw before we got to the painting part of it. And you just wanted to know, like, I thought I signed my kid up for a painting class. Well, it, it is, and we were just drawing something that was a little more complicated, and we did spend a little more time on that than normal, and, you know, just explaining how the class went, and guess what? That's a student that has come back weekly for well over a year, and she's, you know, the parent now, you know, is just extremely communicative and just really loves that her daughter is gaining the skills that she's gaining, you know, so what I don't know, what would you say you've had to kind of field as far as complaints or concerns, just so teachers know, like, this is how you can handle it. And it, it ends up, it almost always ends up in a positive reaction. Yeah, I think, well, I think the thing is, like, I've, 
I mean, there's, there's actually a, a couple of tips that I, I have with that. I always, you know, uh, really address my emails, uh, mm -hmm. respectfully, you know, like dear so-and-so, um, I just wanted to let you know, you know, in regards to, you know, and just really kindly explaining it in, in a very tactful and kind fashion. And I feel like sometimes we, especially with, uh, some of the things that I've read on Facebook, uh, sometimes we, we get too caught up, uh, and we, resp we, we take our, we let our feelings, like our initial reaction, right. Get the best of us. Um, and I'm, a firm believer that there's always a solution to any problem. And I but, agree. Yeah. And I think sometimes you just have to step back and give it a bit of time or, you know, maybe even write out your feelings and then, but that's not an email that you send, like write out your feelings and then like, look at it and think, okay, if I were a parent receiving this, how would I react, you know, and how can you then reword everything so that it is very professional and you, you get those feelings, put those feelings aside. Oh, for sure. I think, you know, that's, a, that's also, I think a really great way is to like draft something that, you know, that allows you to express yourself. Because the thing is like, sometimes the hard part is that, um, you know, when we receive these things, it's like, oh gosh, am I really like this? <laughs> and, uh, but then you take a step back and, you know, just have faith in your abilities, you know, um, I, that's what I would say uh, to to uh, new teachers on the platform, to have faith in what you do, to be confident about what you do, mm -hmm. and and then people can feel that, people can sense that you're confident, right? Um, and that makes it a, a lot of the time that eliminates any sort of doubt of like uh, incompetency, and that that's something that I've also um, have learned when I was, you know, learning, uh, becoming, you know, a musician, you know, on this like path, you know, and I found that a lot of the skills that I, I learned, you know, for example, oh, if I squeak or if I make a mistake, oh, okay, well, it, you know, it's, it happened. I can't fix it. It's, uh, it's been done. It's, um, entered your ears already. Right. <laughs> um, but, uh, but you that, have to move on. Yeah. You have to move on because if, if I were to focus on that one thing I did not do perfectly, then it's like when you look at a painting and you're, you're a painter and an artist in your own way that there is a dot and I don't know why it's there. <laughs> right? But does anybody <laughs> else really notice it the way that you notice it? Also, you know, like you have to give yourself grace sometimes. There's that little thing that you can just move on from. And it's very possible that someone else didn't even register that. Yeah, for sure. And the the the, the, the thing is, it's like, you know, um, sometimes I, I know that, and, I, and I, I've done this too, that, you know, when we're by ourselves, when we're uh, doing, you know, this type of work, and we don't really have, like, we, we, there's no back office where we could, you know, the teachers can talk, you know, like the teacher lounge, or, you know, things like that. Right, um, we have to do things like this instead, so that we can actually <laughs> talk to each other. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, and I, and I feel like, you know, that type of community is also, uh, is also really important, because, I mean, we are human, and we, you know, t we do feel things, and, I, I would probably say, like, tr when addressing those types of, you know, concerns to really just, you know, uh, tactfully, you know, uh, po point A, B, C, you know, uh, really organize one's thoughts so that there is clarity. I, I do sometimes have my assistant um, assist me. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, she, she so there you have someone to bounce some ideas off of. Yeah. Yeah, and she's she's really uh, she's really excellent. She's uh, extremely efficient. I'm so lucky to have found her, um, along with my part time, which actually happens to be her cousin. <laughs> so and so that's is, how you met your part your part time assistant. Yeah, my my part time assistant um, through. Yeah, I, I said, are you okay with having your cousin work with you? I won't encounter problems. She said she respects me and there are no questions. <laughs> Sorry, so how did you find an assistant? Was that also through either Upwork or Indeed? And do you have a, did you have to go through and kind of develop systems of how you do things so that 
this person could take over some of those tasks for you? Like what was the transition period of doing everything yourself to having these assistants? Well, I, I still to this day cannot, uh, cannot believe that I did everything by myself. It's I, a lot. I, I know. And I'm this close to hiring someone myself. I was, I was, I, I would, I would recommend it. It's really a, a game changer. Um, I think a lot of people, and I was in this mindset for a long time was, but I can't, I can't see how I can afford that. You know, like you look at your salary and I do other things too. It's not just virtual teaching. And I'm like, okay, well, I make this much here and I make this much here. But from what I understand, them being able to take things off your plate frees up time for you to do other things that do make the money to definitely cover it. Like I'd be happy to break even, but to have an assistant and that also increase my business would be amazing. So can you speak to that? Oh, for sure. Um, I would probably say um, I started my first assistant. Um, I had her start as part time because mm -hmm. I, I wasn't quite sure um, where, where to go uh, in regards to this. So with Upwork, what's really great is that you can find a variety of talent. And um, there was uh, there's this Facebook group, uh, the Diamond Out School Diamonds. Uh, yeah, that actually talks about, you know, that actually uh, talks about like, uh, you know, different, uh, ways of being able to get a VA. And so I said, okay, you know, I, I'm so tired. I don't, I didn't have time to practice anymore, which was really, Whoa, yeah. I was, I mean, it wasn't even just, I mean, the, the teaching wasn't, it wasn't just the teaching. I also had to grade homework. And the thing is okay. all of them did the homework. And so the thing is, I was like, <laughs> No, it's great. I mean, they want the maximum uh, to get out of the class and it's not recommended. You know, I don't, I, I, it's I mean, not required. But, like it's not required. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's like, <gasps> I'm just like, oh my gosh. And so I, I, I started her as a uh, part-time and gradually, um, as I started, uh, and I was able to find her for a good price. So she had started at, uh, around five an hour. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, you could find a lot of really great talent in the Philippines. And then it gradually, um, it was un unfortunately until she had um, unexpectedly resigned. She actually just resigned the one day she said, I quit. I'm sorry. I can't do this anymore. Oh, no. Out of the blue. Uh, uh -huh. she, I mean, because uh, she had gotten ill. And so uh, I said, oh. you know, I'm, I'm Yeah, so you have to understand that. And be okay. compassionate about it. Well, yeah. And then I found, then the same day I found um, my current one. Um, and she, she's she been working. She's actually full-time now. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I tell her if there's like a time where I'm out of town and I can't attend to anything really, um, she, I, she can go overtime. And so um, I think per week. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's roughly, I mean it's, it's not bad. You know, uh -huh. I mean, you could, you could find talent like this. I know there's a VA program that one of my colleagues, um, she runs. And so she kind of organizes like different VAs for people, which is really, um, which is really a time saver. I found, yeah. I found one through her. Um, but then we, uh, I wasn't able to, um, make it work with just because of scheduling. And so, I was able to um, find uh, my my part time person through my full time person. Yeah. <laughs> well, look at how you know we talked about the class recommendations and word of mouth. Like word of mouth and getting a recommendation from somebody is where I I like to go first always. You know, if someone is going to vouch for somebody else and you know that they can do a good job you know, and you want to give them a try, why not? You know, because it's so much better than just blindly picking somebody and hoping they're doing or capable of doing what you need them to do whenever somebody else is like, oh, this person has this work ethic. And, you know, like you just have that recommendation to go by and it's, it's the building trust. You know, they were able to give you that trustworthy backup for that person. For sure, and I think um, as a as a result of that, I've been able to um, develop um, a lot quicker. You know, like we do mm -hmm. 
uh, we do our we also do research with like you know different lead sheets of like you know different charter schools um in the united states um you know doing doing research on homeschool communities you know or homeschool groups you know social media for those uh homeschool groups and things like that and being able to gauge um you know different demographics mm -hmm. um in a way that it's like okay you know this is really cool perhaps like different um you know enrichment you know uh, researching enrichment programs too which is something that we're going to be focusing on in this in the spring so and, you're researching this to be able to build your classes to cater to this type of students that are looking for what you offer right yes um and the thing is for example i know um here uh with you know music theory it's it's always so it's it depends on the state right so it depends mm -hmm. where you're from uh you know the different exams that they have for music theory um for example we're uh, we're doing a lot of uh curriculum development for you know just like kind of like preparation like to help kids you know be able to understand that like to different topics like what are intervals what is a cadence you know and all those things um we've been we've been doing a lot of uh, development for that and i've hi i've actually also hired out for that too um and i i've found that you know uh some really great talent on upwork i i would recommend that if you have the resources to be able to um hire someone to assist with curriculum development i highly recommend it um i've throughout the uh 2021 i was able to uh do some really great improvements with the portuguese for young learners french for mm -hmm. young learners spanish for young learners classes um by finding people on these um on these websites fever yeah. I, I i i i fever i think i if i understand functions like upwork but i haven't um i've been so comfortable with upwork i've just been like you know <laughs> no, in the once you find something that's working and you are familiar with it why change right so if you're if you're gaining what you need to gain from upwork that's awesome and it's so good to hear that this is something that is beneficial because i've been considering it and putting it off and putting it off for so long but um, my husband owns a business as well and we were actually just talking about like the type of tasks that he does are so specialized like he does automation and has to design things. And a lot of what he's doing isn't something someone else can do. It has to come from him to get that design work out. But um, he actually just even said, oh yeah, like what you're doing, you could probably really benefit from something like this. And we had this exact same kind of conversation. And for him to say like, go ahead and hire someone, you know, <laughs> I was like, yes, this is what I need. Just like, I needed that backup of like, I, if I look at what I do and I, you know, look at, I've started to actually kind of create systems and like write down my processes for things so that whenever I do hire somebody, I can say, okay, well, this is what I do and this is what I need you to do. And they can tell me that that's feasible or not, you know? Yeah, for sure. And I, and I think it's one of those things that, you know, I, I, I could definitely tell you, you know, having assistance with email uh, because to uh, each situation is different you know and i how do i say this i mean what's amazing about kathleen is that she's so self-efficient um like i mean she and she had like really like like learned uh -huh. like what i wh how it works you know um which was something that you know uh, you know it actually uh, really um I, I was I was really impressed, you know, from the beginning, and she she helps me with cor correspondences, like because it does take like thought, like I, you know, it's not like yeah. it's not like you're sending a text message to someone, you know, you're sending like a thoughtful response, and for for right. me, for me when I was doing email by myself, it would take me to make sure I addressed every single point of every, you know. To possible topic it would take me 40 minutes to write three emails yeah it's time consuming you don't want to 
you you want to make sure you're answering everything that they're asking because that's one of my pet peeves whenever you send a text and you have like three things in a text and then they answer the first one and then never get back to you about the second two you know it's like hello i need answers for this and you don't want to keep bothering them so you don't want to be that person you want to make sure you're providing that professional communication Yes. And, and so some, so what, one of the things that I've done is, you know, um, I've created templates also like mm -hmm. uh, to kind of respond to like, kind of like the generic, like, you know, uh, inquiries about the classes, you know, a list of links, uh, that make it so that they're easily accessible. Uh, so that way, you know, for example, if it's about, uh, you know, French for young learners, for example, then, uh, she could just copy the link, you know, to like, oh, what class would work here? We also, I also offer consultations now. Like, uh, I mean, I charge a dollar for it, but I always give the dollar back. <laughs> just oh, you mean like for the students? For pre, pre like pre-course registration? Yeah, because mm -hmm. it's just sometimes people have doubts about pl their placement. Uh, so they sometimes, and I've, I actually had gotten to the point that it's actually better for me to take time to make sure that the class is, um, for that kid or what, right. I, you know, according to how well they do with the consultation. But I mean, but at the same time, it's, you know, it's just, uh, I, 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 I really recommend, you know, having, uh, a VA. I just, it's just, I, I've been able to actually have time to be able to continually to grow and develop, um, redo individual research, um, look into, you know, um, you know, different ideas of growth. Um, and it's something that I, you know, wouldn't have been able to do, or it would, I would have done it, but it would have been a lot slower. Um, right. Yeah. So um, how far into your business did you actually look into getting an assistant or just hiring one task out to try it out? I actually was still an individual teacher when I hired my first assistant. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I saw I saw the benefits of that. Um, she, she was, she was actually quite good in her, in her way. Like she had a lot of information about human resources. So like usually a lot of time when you're screening different, um, when you're screening different, um, people, mm -hmm. um, it, it always helps to have someone who, who does have a human resources background. Now that said, the person that I have right now, uh, she has a lot of customer service, um, uh, background. And that's okay. also really, that's, that also helps a lot because, um, you know, with the language, you know, being able to, you know, say, well, you know, how, how would you approach this? How would you approach that type of thing? Um, you know, in regards to responding to difficult situations that, you know, happen once in a while. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's extremely valuable and it helps you expand, you know, like, um, having, um, you know, making sure that the tasks are delegated well, like the part-time person, she does more design. Uh, so, okay. we, so I have her do like the videos, you know, making sure that everything's like, you know, the thumbnails are look good, uh, that the videos are, you know, look presentable, look professional. Um, are these videos for flex courses or videos that you use during your live courses? Oh, uh, I should clarify. They're actually like, you know, the little videos that when you click on the class, it has like, Oh, the, like the introduction introduction. Yeah. The, yeah. The intro videos. Um, and also to making sure that, you know, uh, things are uploaded to the social media. So we, we, del I delegate tasks, more of those tasks towards her, mm -hmm. um, with Kathleen, she, she does more. So like the overseeing of things. I also have a research assistant who actually was a former student of mine. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. No, it's, uh, he's, he's actually, um, he's really smart. Um, and he, he helps me with cur also cur with curriculum development. So, um, he has a background in history and languages. And so he helps me go through the presentations to make sure that there's no spelling errors. Um, you know, that everything is clear, uh, that the activities are good. Um, and so it's great for me to be able to provide opportunities for people, you know, for, you know, someone that you've been connected to before. And it's also nice to have that second set of eyes on things because you can read something a hundred times and think that everything is perfect. 
And, you know, you overlook that same word every time or that same grammatical error. So isn't it nice to have that as yeah, just like, a backup to make sure you're putting out quality products? Of course. And it's like, I'm looking at the same thing and I'm just like, okay. yeah, <laughs> your eyes start crossing. It's like, yeah. you know, one gets bigger than the other. You know? So this this interview ended up turning a little bit because I didn't realize how much you're able to rely on, um, you know, outside work and just being able to run the organization that you're running and create the business and growth that you've created. So um, it was really interesting to hear about that. What would you say, like, if you want someone to take away anything about being a business owner alongside being a teacher, because I think that's the biggest, um, what's the right word for it? Just like as, as a starter, you know, whenever somebody's starting out into the virtual teaching business, they, I know I was like this, I was a teacher, I wanted to teach. And then you don't realize how much extra stuff goes along with it on this business side of things. So how about we end the conversation with just like, what would you say is something that you would want someone newer to that's starting out that just thinks I'm, I'm just a teacher. How can they look at themselves now as a business owner and what is the best advice for them? Well, gosh, you know, the thing is like, on a, a, to be quite frank, I mean, I don't want to like kill people's dreams here, but the thing is, if you just have this idea of like, I, I want to do this online platform teaching, I'm just a teacher, like just relying on this. Well, I mean, it's going to be really uh, difficult because you do have to have <laughs> like, if you want to see growth, you have to have like a business mindset. And to right. not think, if you want to, for example, if you if you are a brick and mortar teacher and you have been teaching for thirty years, which is beautiful, I I, I have never been like in a brick or mortar brick and mortar situation, um, and I have so many so much respect for those uh, people who who do deal do that you know type of teaching, but at the same time, you know, you have to have this type of growth mindset yeah Otherwise, it's very different than being in a school I can vouch for that for sure and you, you know you you get to um you know I I would probably say to you know do be proactive you know um there's so many things on the internet about how to you know grow your business I mean there's this actual uh gentleman named Gary V uh that I uh watch his stuff uh some of mm -hmm. his uh, TED talks he, he talks about, you know, this idea of delegation, like, like when you delegate tasks, and this is something I, I'm such a perfectionist, like I actually had to, I actually had to really internalize what he said. So for example, if someone is not uh, doing something at the same level as you would do it, that's okay. But the fact that you're able to delegate that to someone else gives you an opportunity to be able to grow in a different way. And so, oh uh, yeah. For sure. And I, you know, I, I, I would probably say that for, for new teachers, I would say, you know, take the skills, take your passion of what you have inside of you. Um, be, find a way to be able to show that, especially in those videos, like the person videos uh, that they have on OutSchool. And right. Like let people see who you are in those introductions. Yeah, and, and be able to grow from there because if if people view you as someone's genuine, as someone that's passionate, someone that cares, uh, and this is something that we're still working on because the what one of the things that we're finding is that the actual uh, videos of people talking are actually um, more uh, more likely to get more uh, students rather than some, you know, like a cart, you know, one of those doodly videos or like, uh, yeah, which are really popular and really cool, but there, there's not that personal connection. Yeah. You know, unless, you, you know, you know, you know what I mean? So we've been doing that type of research. I mean, right now um, it's just a matter of making sure everything has everything in my, well, anyway, that's besides the point, uh, but also being <laughs> able to, <laughs> no, but be really uh, honestly, like being able to, um, start from there to build, you know, really good, well thought out classes, uh, make sure that you're comfortable with the platform uh, of yeah. how, how to Zoom works, because uh, that can sometimes be a bit crazy. Um, make sure that you know your stuff cold, 
be flexible. Um, you know, sometimes you have an idea of how a class should be run in your head and the complete opposite <laughs> happens. When exactly. It yeah, you do. That's, that is like a teacher's motto. It doesn't matter where you teach, what subject you teach, being flexible is a must. And also being kind, mm -hmm. you know, um, and I think, you know, if you're, if you're kind and you're, um, and you show that too uh, in your correspondences with parents, then they're more than likely to want to work with you more and to actually, you know, uh, gauge with you. Um, right. The platform. Yeah, for sure. That's, that's yeah. probably the, the advice is I would give. <laughs> I think, no, I think that's great. And just hearing that and reflecting on what I've done myself too, like you, you know, you start out knowing you want to teach and you're a teacher or, you know, there's a lot of people that don't have a teaching background that are able to teach virtually, but they know their stuff and they know they can share it. So, you know, you're a teacher, but that business advice is really good where I think you don't want to, like, you don't want to overwhelm yourself. You don't want to just research to death and not do anything. So there's the starting point of what you should do and what you just said, like, kind of just starting with that intro video and being genuine and being kind and having that correspondence to be able to build trust and start with that beginner course to be able to then develop those more advanced courses that it's all something that will take time to build. But, you know, there's a lot of ways you can do it and you can veer off into more social media or you can, you know, allow the platform such as OutSchool to kind of help you along the way as you start and then just gradually add those things in. So for sure. And, 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 and the niche, I almost forgot. I apologize. Uh, the, the niche, um, finding mm -hmm. your niche, you know, uh, finding, you know, how how you find your niche is through through trial and error. And um, I could definitely tell you that it, it takes a lot of patience. And, and, and some time, you know, to be able to find that niche of what, of how like people are able to like grab onto the things that you, you have to offer. And uh, that I, I think um, teacher Jade actually had a blog about that. And I found that really useful um, also uh, of yeah. you know, able to understand where your niche is. Um, I think but, too, like with the niche, you know, that's such a cliche word in like the business, you know, we talk about funneling and the niche and all these, there's like all these business terms. And as a teacher, that was overwhelming as well, because it's like, oh, I have to learn all these things. I don't know exactly what does this mean? What's evergreen? You know, evergreen meaning a class that you can offer all the time or any time that anyone can take where versus, you know, something that's very specialized or seasonal and you only offer it at this time of year or whatever. But, um, that's just start small and work your way up. And the other thing when you said about niche that I I want to go back to from the beginning of the interview is just you wrote out what you're good at and what you're not good at. And so finding what you're good at and really honing in on the things that you're passionate about is what's going to allow those students to see what you can genuinely teach and you know so much about. For sure. And I and I and I think um and yeah, and, and it takes, you know, make, making sure that you, you know, you don't copy people, what people mm -hmm. have done, and because people, people can see that, and, um, and making sure that you, you are original and genuine in your own way, and then by, by doing those things, uh, makes it so that way, uh, you will be able to achieve the success. The, the success is gradual, and it takes, uh, it takes time. Um, and it's a learning process. I, I still learn things every day. You oh, know? yeah. Um, of how to handle, you know, different situations I never encountered when I was an individual teacher on the platform. But I know um, with the growth that we've experienced, I know, um, I mean, we, we do, we do, we do okay. <laughs> we do well, <laughs> actually, yeah. we do well. <laughs> so <laughs> there's, no, there's no complaints. I'm very, I feel very blessed. Uh, I feel very blessed uh, to, um, you know, be able to do what I'm doing. That's for sure. Right. Yeah. I think that's a really great way to end the interview. You did, you just explained so much about how you started to where you are and how you were able to make that happen and 
how the classes are run and what you were able to do to build relationships, but also how you were able to take stuff off of your plate, you know, and I wasn't expecting to learn as much as I did about how you are now as much a manager as a teacher, you know, that you're able to manage a business. And that's, that's what it is. We're now business owners. So thank you so much. It was great talking to you. It was a pleasure, Amy. Thank you for having me. The first thing I need to say as we wrap up this episode is a big, huge thank you to Christine for being extremely patient with me because we interviewed quite a long time ago and I am finally chiseling away at my list and getting things done because one of the things I needed to do as a business owner was take a lot of her advice, including hiring people to do things. For me, it's a lot of stuff that I'm not super great at and it was taking me way too long to do a lot of the tasks and it was time to disperse them to other people. But also it's hard to give up that control or it's sometimes hard to justify spending that money. So as a business owner, if you are at that point, I highly advise you to take her advice. She has grown her business and there's a reason for it. The other thing I thought was really funny is that she actually got to meet Nick, the elusive Nick from out school. So if anybody is listening and they are a teacher on out school, you know, we get a ton, a ton of emails and they are often from Nick from out school. And it has been questioned whether he's a real live person and she can vouch for him. So it was just really fun to like hear little tidbits of what it was like to be a teacher on this platform as long as she has, because I know a lot of teachers are fairly new. And this is also proof that you can build your business and you can grow this business and it's not just a short-lived thing. So thank you, Christine, for such an insightful talk. You can find her and all of her information in the show notes. Make sure you check it out. And if you have any kids, she's got a lot of teachers teaching some really great classes. And you can find me and all of my information in the show notes as well at amy.roadman.art. I have lots of workshops and some in-person things coming up, including a retreat at the beach, a summer camp for adults, because who said the kids are the only ones that can have fun. So make sure you check both of our information out. We would really appreciate it.